In the previous video of my CNC build, the Z axis was built and the Y axis was half assembled. But whilst I was waiting for more parts to complete the build, I used the time to do some printing. This part that is currently printing is a base plate that will sit between the extrusions to hopefully catch some cutting chips. And because of the powder coated bed on the Prusa Mark IV, it ends up with a nice matte surface finish, which looks great. And these parts can slide into the gaps in the frame to create a nice tabletop surface. I then decided to reprint the Z-axis motor mount with resin on the Form 4 and this will be far stronger than the previous PETG part and will hopefully be more heat resistant if the motor gets warm and it also has a mount for a limit switch which we use to home the Z-axis. In the previous video I mentioned I couldn't find a large thick sheet for the cutting bed at a reasonable price so I may just buy a smaller sheet for precise parts in the center and use a larger thinner sheet for the full cutting area. But shortly afterwards, I decided it might just be best to bite the bullet and purchase a huge aluminium tooling plate. This is a 20mm thick cast aluminium plate that has been machined to produce a flat surface finish, which really likes fingerprints. I then started marking a rough area with tape for where the mounting holes need to be, and painted on some blue layout fluid which would allow me to mark the locations for each hole. So with a metal scribe and a few measurements, I can mark the exact mounting positions that need to be centre punched before drilling. Moving this plate around is a bit difficult as it weighs about 16 kilograms, but fortunately my drill has a large platform for it to rest on. So I first partially drilled the holes with a 3mm bit, and then drilled them all the way through with a 6mm bit before finally countersinking all the holes so the bolt heads will sit flush against the top of the cutting bed. I then placed the bed onto the four linear bearings and fortunately all the holes lined up and the Y axis is moving smoothly. It's now time to get some electronics wired up which are going to be routed behind the main gantry to make the setup look neat and keep as many cutting chips away as possible. The great thing about a fixed gantry machine is it only has one motor that actually moves the X and Y axis motors are always fixed in position, so it only requires one drag chain, which makes the wiring a lot easier. For the motor wires, I used 18 gauge silicon shielded cable, which I soldered as close to the motors as possible, as the original motor wires aren't shielded. And then on the other end of the wire, I crimped some connectors that came with my control board, which I've chosen to go with the Duet 3 6HC board, which was recommended by a fellow YouTuber, Ivan Miranda. The Duet 3 is mainly designed for 3D printers, but this 6HC board can handle high enough current for the NEMA 34 motors, and not requiring external stepper motor drivers makes the build far simpler. Right, so I've finished wiring up the main board and also all the stepper motors, and also got the power supply plugged in, which you can probably hear the fan in the background. Uh, and I should be able to control the motors using uh, this web interface with the Duet controller. So if I press this, it should move the x-axis. Looking good. Move the y-axis. Perfect. And the z-axis. <laughs> oh, it's so good seeing it move like that. Everything seems to be running nice and smooth and the motors are nice and quiet compared to my old CNC. Now I just need to finish wiring up all the uh, homing switches as well as the most important thing, the spindle, uh, because currently that's obviously not wired up. <laughs> I'm really happy with the Duet web control so far as I can control it from any computer, tablet or even my phone, which is far easier than operating my old CNC router that ran Mac 3 on a Windows XP machine. I think there are still some things missing with the Duet web control that would be nice to have, like maybe a 3D toolpath viewer, but due to its open source code I'm sure someone will implement it at some point, or it might already be implemented in a different web control firmware that I haven't seen yet. Either way, the wiring and setup was really easy, and being able to adjust every setting in the configuration is really nice. But do you know what isn't nice? Sharp metal cutting chips all over the workshop. So I'm going to build an enclosure around this machine. These four vertical extrusions are mounted to the frame of the machine with 3D printed brackets, which aren't the most rigid mounting points, 
but the horizontal beams of the enclosure will be rigidly mounted to the uprights using bolts. So the main enclosure frame will be more than rigid enough and the printed base pieces are just there to attach it to the frame. For the walls of the enclosure, I decided to use 1.5mm aluminium sheet, which can be attached to the extrusions with low profile bolts. And this is the point I realised I may have built this machine a little too close to the wall. But with no chance of moving it by myself, I just have to breathe in a little and squeeze behind. To mount this side sheet, I need to cut a hole for the x-axis motor, so I temporarily attached it so I can trace around the motor mount. Now this is the point where I sometimes question the tools I have available. To cut this hole I really should have bought a handheld jigsaw, but I didn't want to buy one just for this. So I used tin snips which took forever and didn't exactly leave the best finish. I even tried my old Dremel, but it didn't have anywhere near enough power and would have taken even longer. In the end I managed to get the hole correctly sized with the snips and a file, but if I ever have to do this again, I'm definitely buying the correct tools. So with the sheet mounted to the frame and the protective cover peeled off, the enclosure is starting to look really good. However, when I placed the top sheet on, it understandably became quite dark inside. So I bought some small LED baton lights that mount to the inside of the enclosure and light up the machine nicely. So that's it for part four of the CNC build. Um, although the machine looks like it's nearly ready to cut, there's still lots of stuff to do. Uh, I need to just go through all the wiring, just make sure nothing's rubbing, and check that all the bolts are tight and thread locked down. Uh, I also need to finish off the enclosure, put another sheet on the side here, as well as a clear perspex door on the front, uh, so I can see what's going on inside without getting covered in metal shrapnel. Uh, I'm really pleased with the electronics. I was uh, nervous with uh, wiring everything up, because I've never done something quite like that before. Uh, I've built a few 3D printers in the past, but they usually come with um, a good user manual and a lot of the wires are pre-made. Uh, but with this, I had to wire it up completely through uh, Googling wiring diagrams and stuff like that. Um, it's also really cool that you can just control it via the web control on the Duet board. So I can just press buttons on my phone um, I probably won't use my phone when I finally get round to cutting. I'll probably use a laptop or some kind of PC with a screen attached to the side, uh, just because you can see a lot more and it's just easier to access all the menus. Um, but I have actually preloaded some G-code onto the uh, machine, which I should be able to start with my phone uh, by just pressing a few buttons and... It's a very basic G-code. All it does is draw a big circle, um, but it shows that the machine is running. Uh, I still need to wire up the spindle. I haven't done that yet. But um, other than that, I'm really happy. <laughs> it's going together really well. I do get a bit nervous watching this though, just in case it hits any end stops or, yeah. There's quite a lot of power behind those motors. <laughs> So yeah, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this part four video. Uh, I guess I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.